What's up guys, Silver here with another Halo Master Chief Collection Achievement Guide. This time we're doing part 6 of our Halo 3 Lasso Run. This is the Ark. This is a pretty long level, so get ready. We're about to get dropped off on this Pelican here, and we're going to start moving forward. I'm going to show you how to run past the first two encounters in this mission, but if you're really having trouble getting past these guys, you could always take it nice and slowly. You should have plenty of plasma pistol ammo from some napping grunts we're going to kill, so you can methodically noob combo all the brutes and the jackals in the area, and then you could always finish off the grunts with a simple headshot. But follow this path and don't use your sniper rifle. We're going to save that ammo for later. Sometimes there's three grunts on the left all clustered together. And sometimes there's two on the left and one on the right. So we got two on the left one on the right this time around. And when this happens, the one on the right tends to wake up. So just headshot him. And then we want to jump up and kill the two grunts in the distance. Because they're going to go up on top of that tower and get on those turrets if you don't take them out. And while we're going around here... The enemies are actually moving forward to where our position was when we were jumping up and down where we killed those grunts. So you can see they're all over there now with their backs turned to us so we could sneak around behind them. We kind of drew them over there. You want to headshot these two jackals and quickly reload so when you go past this first drop pod that actually gives you full BR ammo again. And then we're going to headshot the first carbine jackal and then for the second one you could headshot them or you could shoot them in the legs which will get them to kind of stagger and run away and you could smack them to get your shield back up if you need to. Sometimes you get a checkpoint here, sometimes you don't, but we're going to keep pushing forward. We want to look up at the top of that turret. You can see there is a jackal with a carbine. We're going to take him out, turn to the right. Sometimes there are some grunts up on this wall with you, so take them out if they are there. And then we're going to look up at the top of the turret. Again, there's going to be two more carbine jackals up there, so take those guys out before we move on. And you want to make sure you're behind this wall while you're doing this because there's a bunch of people down in the middle of the map here. So you don't want to be exposed to those guys while you're doing this. So we took them out. We're going to follow this path and wrap around the whole playable area here. And at this point, we want to be ready to throw frag grenades down because there's going to be these jackals right here most of the time. So you want to just throw grenades at them between you and the jackals so they jump away from you, not towards you. And then that will allow you to kind of get past that section without being shot too much. And then we'll move up here. Sometimes you get a checkpoint about here, sometimes you don't. But we want to switch to our plasma grenades right now. And we're going to jump up and throw a plasma grenade at that brute. I missed with that one, but I have a second one from those sleeping grunts we killed. Then you want to wrap up around this rock and shoot as many grunts as quickly as possible because there's actually enemies that are following you up from the area down below that we just skipped. But once you get to this point, you are totally safe. No enemies will follow you here. Grab some plasma grenades on the ground right there by that crate, and we're going to move forward. That brute that we stuck just now... He actually doesn't die from the stick, but it gets him to put his weapon away because his shields collapse and he starts berserking. As we come through the doors here, we're going to exchange our sniper rifle for one of these plasma pistols on the ground that have a full charge. We're going to walk up to the cliff and we're going to aim our overcharged plasma pistol at about the midsection of the brute because he's going to crouch down when he hears our gun go off. Right after taking out that brute, we want to turn down to the left. There's going to be another brute plus four more grunts. We want to take these grunts out first compared to the ones in the distance because these are the ones that are within range of throwing plasma grenades, which can be pretty devastating. So watch out for that. Take out those four grunts, and then we'll noob combo this brute, and then we'll focus on the grunts in the distance. You can see they started down below, and they have to wrap all the way around this whole area to actually get to us, to get within range, to be dangerous. So as that happens, we're going to go down here. There's more BR ammo, so grab that, and we're going to grab this rocket launcher without grabbing the rocket launcher ammo. So I'll explain why in a bit, but we're going to go over here, and while the grunts are fighting the marines, we're going to stick one of these two mongies twice. Two sticks usually blows it up. This time around, uh, it had extra health, I guess, and it did not destroy that mongoose. I looked away. You can't even see the mongoose anymore. I'm just assuming that it's dead, but it's actually still alive somewhere. So once the rest of the grunts are dead, which it looks like my marine buddies did a good job of taking those guys out, we're going to grab that second mongoose, which is nice and healthy, and we're going to actually drive up to one of these marines. It doesn't matter which, and pick one of them up. We want to hide behind a rock as we're picking these guys up because once you actually get the mongoose and start driving it over here, that will actually spawn in two prowlers. So you want to be safe behind a rock so you don't get shot up while you're waiting for one of these marines to hop on your mongoose here but once you do get a marine we're going to drive over here towards this previous section and it's nice and safe over here so you can take your time and get the marine to hop off we're going to exchange our rockets for his assault rifle so he could become a rocket marine we'll get back into the mongoose he'll hop back on we're going to turn around and drive back towards that fight that's happening right now and we're going to park right about here on the left side of this big rock along the cliff the reason for that is this is a great vantage point for him to shoot at all these guys with all of his rockets. He has infinite rockets effectively. And the rock is a great place for us to hang out because it provides cover from the enemy and allows us to be near the rocket marine. If you stray too far away from the marine, he'll actually get out of the mongoose, which we don't want. If this rocket guy dies before clearing everyone out, just revert to your last checkpoint and start this part over. Most of the time he survives, but occasionally he will die. 
But I skipped ahead a little bit while you're waiting for that Marine to clear out the whole area. You could turn around and grab the sniper quickly that we actually put down when we first came into this area. We exchanged it for the plasma pistol on the ground. You could grab that again. We're going to have a sniper and a battle rifle. You want to do that quickly, though, because like I mentioned, you want to make sure the Marine doesn't get out of the mongoose. And now that all of the enemies are dead, we can move down into here. And we're going to blow up this mongoose, which I thought I destroyed originally. So get that out of here. That actually went pretty far and is pretty impressive, uh, which works for us. It's still alive, but it's out of the map, so that's fine. The reason we want it to be destroyed or otherwise unavailable is because these Marines, other than the rocket guy who we do want, uh, these extra ones are going to follow us into the next section and blow our cover, which we don't want. So I like to take the Prowler. One usually survives, which I do like because I'm going to use it in a little bit. But you want to take it and park it over where I just parked it. It's actually pretty easy to get it into there. It looks like it might be a little tough, uh, but it's actually very easy to drive it into that little corner. And then the Marines can't unpark it from there. They're stuck there until we unstuck them. So we're going to drive up to here with our rocket guy. Remember to stay near the rocket guy so he doesn't move around. But before we go down below, we're going to zoom in with our sniper. And you can see there's two brutes in the distance. We're actually going to line up the first brute, the closest brute. We're going to line up his head with the left leg of the far brute so you could see we could actually shoot both of them at once and that way we could save a bunch of sniper rifle ammo it takes a lot of shots to take down the shield of these guys because of the tilt skull human weapons are way less effective at taking down shielding but a characteristic of the sniper rifle is that the bullets actually continue through any characters so you could actually kill 5 10 20 players all at once with one bullet if they were perfectly lined up but we only have two lined up here, so you're going to land the headshot on that first one, and then the far one will have his shields collapse. Obviously, you don't kill him with that bullet because it's shot into the shin or whatever it hits on him. But it will only take one more shot to the dome to finish him off, so save the ton of ammo there. The next priority is that grunt I just killed. It's pretty tough to actually land a headshot on that grunt, so don't waste too much ammo on him. You want to use two sniper bullets max on him. But if you do miss and you just end up hitting him in the back of the, uh, the methane tank or something, it will actually have enough momentum to push him forward. So two shots will shove him far enough forward where he won't come back down and engage us when we do jump down there. So two shots max on that guy. It will push him towards the wreckage of the longsword up there. And then you don't have to worry about him uh, for the time being. But you want to transition to shooting this brute shot brute on the rock over there. I like to go through a couple magazines of sniper. And then I actually like to use a full clip of battle rifle ammo. And then switch back to my sniper to finish off the brute. Just to make sure that the brute is weak enough. And I don't use all of my sniper rifle ammo. And don't end up getting through his shielding. Sometimes he'll drop a bubble shield. Most of the time he doesn't. I noticed if you kill one of the grunts nearby him. He might be more uh, likely to drop a bubble shield. So just ignore the grunts until the brute is dead. And then you could finish off any of the remaining grunts with any additional sniper rifle ammo you may have. You most likely only have a couple sniper rifle bullets left, so no big deal if you don't have any and you can't take out any of these grunts from all the way back here. They're very far away and not really a threat to us. As we get closer, we could actually take them out with the battle rifle, still from far away, where we're not really in danger from getting too close to them where they could shoot us or grenade us or anything, so don't worry about that. So the only remaining enemies in that section are the grunts that may be alive, and also there is a chopper and a ghost that are active in that section as well. So to deal with them, we're going to go back here, gather any grenades you may uh, want to fill up. I need to fill up my spike grenades and plasma nades. Should have done that earlier, but I'll do it now. We're going to go back here and exchange our now empty or mostly empty sniper rifle for one of these fresh plasma pistols back here. Remember, there are three over here to start. So we're going to grab one of these. We have a full plasma pistol now along with a handful of BR ammo. We're probably running a little bit low on BR ammo at this point, but there is more up ahead, so we're going to grab that shortly. And the last thing we want to do in this section is let the Prowler loose that we kind of uh, lodged into the corner over there. So you can see there's still a guy in the turret just hanging out waiting for something to happen. And uh, the driver, who would be the driver, just gave up or didn't even try. I don't even know which. It doesn't even matter. But you want to drive it all the way down to the Pelican area because they sometimes have trouble getting it down there. They're not very bright. Now we're going to go grab our mongoose again. So we have the rocket mongoose and we have a prowler along with us. And the prowler isn't really going to do much, but they'll at least serve as a distraction so the enemies aren't shooting at only us. And in this particular playthrough, it took a while to get the marines to actually get into the prowler. So I'm going to skip ahead about a minute. They were extra dumb this time around. I don't know why, but after a series of games of musical chairs, they finally got into the prowler. As I come to this next section, I'm going to pull over on the left side here. And that allows the prowler to just go right up the gut, right up the middle and distract these guys for me. I'm going to come in behind them, and I will park my rocket guy right about here, and then I'll get out because I don't want to take any damage. These guys will start shooting the rocket guy. Hopefully the rocket guy could take out both the chopper and the ghost, which happens sometimes. Uh, this time around, he didn't really do much before dying, so I actually have to take out both of them uh, by myself. So plan B is just kind of hang out behind this ramp, 
and noob combo them as they uh, get close because that stuns the vehicles obviously so you could either headshot them or you could actually board them if they're close enough and that will get your shields back up on top of knocking them out of the vehicle so I was able to land a headshot on that stunned ghost and then this chopper came in and the choppers are easier to deal with because they're not as accurate with their shots but we're going to stun this guy and then headshot him as well this brute ends up having a bubble shield so I'm going to grab that even though I don't have any plans for bubble shields in this mission might as well have it for now. And then we're going to start gathering supplies and preparing for the next section. So there's still those three grunts alive, so don't forget about those guys. We could take them out from far away with our battle rifle. Sometimes they drop down and behind the rock, so you can't shoot them, obviously, until you wrap up around the side. So we're going to get two right off the bat, and then one drops down, so we'll deal with him shortly. At this point, you want to pick up the rockets from the dead Marine. If he did die, if he's still alive, just exchange for the rockets. So you have rockets and a battle rifle at this point. We're going to move forward and grab the battle rifle ammo from this crash site on my right after we kill this grunt, if he goes down ever. There we go, and now we're going to move forward. You can see there's some dead Marines, some uh, wreckage, some ammo, so grab this battle rifle ammo. We're going to go back and get the rocket ammo that we avoided earlier in the mission. The reason we did that is, if you grab that rocket ammo, you'll have three rockets, but you're going to give it to the Marine, and if the Marine dies with three rockets, he'll actually only wind up uh, offering you one rocket when you pick it back up. But for whatever reason... If you don't pick up that additional rocket ammo, he will actually drop the rockets that had one rocket in there, and there will actually be two rockets in the dropped weapon. So it's better to actually go pick up that rocket ammo later to not only ensure that you don't lose ammo, but you might actually gain one rocket by doing so. More rocket and BR ammo right here, and if you ended up just shoving that first grunt I killed into this wreckage, remember to take him out. You also want to ensure you have a ghost at this point. Sometimes your rocket guy will destroy one that's occupied by a grunt, but there's a fresh one no one gets in if you take care of the enemies like I outlined, which is the ghost that I'm using right now, but we're going to go over here. You can see there's a dead marine with a sniper next to him. We're going to grab this sniper, and you don't need to juggle any of your weapons. I don't know why I'm doing that. We're simply going to use this sniper, which has seven bullets to take out three grunts, so seven shots for three grunts. You should be able to manage that, especially since two are stationary on turrets. One happened to get off the turret, but that's all right. We'll go over here. Uh, that's all we're using the sniper rifle for, so it doesn't matter what weapon you exchange. We're going to switch it back, so I have rockets and a BR again. Hop back into the ghost. We'll speed on over here, and you can see I have no shield because uh, the static is going all up and down my uh, character right here, which you can see when you're in a ghost or a uh, any other vehicle, really, I guess, except for a tank or a wraith, I suppose. But there's a regenerator right here, so grab that. Use it, and you could go into this next section with a full shield. Go down here and make sure you don't drop your ghost down into the next section. We want to keep the ghost up here. Park your ghost right about there, and then we're going to look down, and you're going to see a big rock on the right. And we're going to drop down on the left side of this big rock, and we're just going to walk straight forward for a little bit. And this will most oftentimes get you a checkpoint. So walk to about where I did, or maybe a little further just to be safe. Then you could turn back around and jump back up onto the rocks to get back to your ghost. And we're going to use this ghost to despawn some enemies in the next section. So we're going to hop back into this ghost and then go up on top of this rock. And if you hold the jump button, it actually lifts the nose of your ghost up a little bit. So you actually could get a little higher. Once you're on top of the rock, I like to move forward and turn to the right and go up towards the top and then drift towards the left across that crevice. And then I just like to back down until it becomes steeper. And you could turn to the right. You could see there's two trees. So you know you're in the right spot. There's also two trees further up ahead of you. But then we're going to turn to the left, and as we go around this first corner, it gets pretty steep. So we want to start boosting up and to the left so we don't slide off the wall. That's the toughest corner to get past while staying on the wall, but we're still not out of the woods. We still want to stay nice and high on the wall as we, as quickly as possible, move over here and over this geometry, over this rock wall. And then we'll slide down nice and easily on the other side, and we have thereby avoided the load zone, and we've despawned all the enemies in this next section, which include ghosts, jackals, a fuel rod brute, lots of ugly stuff. We're not going to deal with it, at least right now. We're going to exchange our trusty ghost for a trusty chopper, and we're going to move up into this tunnel. Not all the way through. We're going to hang out in this tunnel for a little while and take out a bunch of enemies from afar. And you can see I like to line myself up with that uh, Covenant torch, that lighting stick over there on the left side of the screen. And then I start going to town on that shade, destroy it. The grunt that occupied it originally probably bailed out by that point. And you can see there's actually a plasma turret set up to the left of that shade turret we just took out. So I'm going to focus my attention on that now. And I'm not actually going to shoot directly at that plasma turret. I'm going to shoot slightly to the right side of that turret. Because that's where the enemies get on and off that turret. And I really want to just take out the enemies, not the turret itself. Because I'm going to use that as bait because enemies like to get on empty turrets. So I'm just going to wait for them to get on the turret. Shoot them a little bit. Hopefully kill them. If I don't kill them, they'll get off and start running around for a little bit. They'll get back on and I'll keep shooting them until they die. And I'm going to use that tactic to not only take out the grunt who is initially on that plasma turret, but also the shade turret operator who has probably bailed before we took out that shade turret. 
So you could kill two grunts that way. And then we're going to turn our attention to the Wraith and just lay into him. I skipped ahead about a minute because it takes a while to take him out. So we've taken out the Wraith, the two grunts who are operating those two turrets to start off. And then we're going to turn our attention to the ghosts who come in as reinforcements. Once you take out that Wraith, two ghosts will come down from the left or they will come down from the right. Or they will split up and one will come from the left, one will come from the right. But those are now your priorities because those are the only real dangers because they drive up pretty close to you if you let them. Fortunately, the chopper is pretty good at pushing enemies back. Not only does it deliver a good amount of damage to these ghosts, it also pushes them around and flips them. So hopefully you can just keep them at bay with those rounds. But if not, if they do get close to you, you want to bail out and hide behind your chopper. The ghost will approach the chopper and then just turn around and run away. And at that point, you could hop back into the chopper and start shooting them as they run away from you. So uh, definitely do that if they start getting too close because they could kill you really quickly if they start shooting at you. So we're going to turn our attention to this sniper tower now. And you could actually shoot it. I like to shoot it on the right side, the very most right side. So it kind of spins it as it takes it off the grav lift. And you want to try to do that with as few rounds as possible because what I'm trying to do here is preserve the life of the grunt that is on the turret on top of that sniper tower. And also I want to spin him away so he's not facing me anymore. So I'm trying to shoot one side to spin it away and off that grav lift. And that will allow you to come up behind him and smack him for shields if you need shields at this point. Most of the time I'm able to do this without so many shots. Unfortunately, this time around, I had to shoot him a few too many times and it ended up killing him actually before I could go up and smack him for shields. Fortunately, I have full shields though, so it doesn't really matter for this particular run. I was just doing it for illustrative purposes. But we're going to go down here now. Both ghosts are dead, or at least the pilots of the ghosts are dead, which is an important distinction to make because sometimes enemies will hop into an empty ghost and then what you thought was a harmless ghost is now all of a sudden shooting you again. So watch out for that. But these two ghosts are placed far enough away from where the enemies, the remaining enemies are. So it's not really too much of an issue. I'm going to move up. And here is where I would move up to to smack the grunt on the turret in the sniper tower uh, if he was still alive. But it looks like he's dead. You can see his dead body on the side there. So we're not going to be doing that. But again, I have full shields anyway, so it doesn't matter this time around, thankfully. But the next step is to take out two of three grunts. There's three grunts, there's five brutes, and the two anti-air wraiths that remain in this section. So we are going to climb up this rock wall, and we're going to be able to take out two of the three grunts from this side. So one is on a turret, so you could easily headshot him while he's just standing there on the turret, not moving. And then another one has a fuel rod gun, so watch out for him. He's obviously a big priority. He will be able to shoot you from this area, and if he does shoot you and start overwhelming you and you don't headshot him quite yet, just drop back down wait for him to stop shooting, and then go back up and try again. Another thing you want to check before you cross this bridge in the middle of this area is to make sure that there's not a brute on that turret that we used as bait in the beginning of this section. Because there's a bunch of brutes that actually start off where I am right now, but once you kill the wraith, they run across this bridge towards that turret. So they might be tempted to get on the turret. So there might be one sitting on that turret. If that happens, grab a plasma pistol from one of the dead grunts, whether it's one of the dead ghost drivers or the grunt we accidentally killed on the sniper tower turret. You can kill him on purpose via melee to get shields up and also get his plasma pistol. Noob combo the brute from afar, and then we can move on to killing the remainder of the enemies. You can see I went back to the previous section to grab the ghost. This isn't totally necessary. You could grab one of the two ghosts in the current section. Most of the time they will be intact even after killing the grunts via chopper. But if they blew up or you can't find them, there's always this one. And when I listed out the remaining enemies, I forgot to mention that there's this guy as well. He is a grunt on top of the sniper tower on a turret. So take him out from afar with either the chopper or the ghost. It doesn't matter what. Then we're going to park our ghost. I like to park it behind that rock so it's safe from any stray fire that may be shot towards it by these brutes up ahead here. But we're going to take out the one last grunt. We're going to poke our heads around this corner and there's going to be the grunt sitting on the turret. So just kind of pop your head out and headshot that guy. Then we're going to run away. And you can see there's going to be some brutes who I got the attention of. They're going to be shooting at me. This is why I put the ghost safely behind the rock. That way it doesn't get blown up from grenades or brute shots or whatever. But we're going to go over here onto this ramp along the right side. And we're going to aim at the back of the rightmost wraith. So you can see there's two wraiths up ahead there. And the one on the right, we're going to shoot two rockets to the back side of it. And you'll be able to get those two rockets to hit. You can see I only shot one. That's because I actually forgot to reload these rockets all the way back when I first picked them up. So I was running around with only one loaded rocket the whole time. So I have to actually end up using more rockets because the Wraith is actually weaker on the backside. So if you shoot two rockets into the backside of the Wraith, you'll actually be able to finish it off with a third rocket to the front side. But since we didn't do that, we have to use a fourth rocket. It'll take either two to the back, one to the front, or 
one to the back, three to the front. So you'll have to use three or four rockets. And you can see that the wraiths don't really dodge or anything. Just wait for them to stop moving, then shoot. They'll start firing some fuel rods at you. Just wait for those to disperse. And then you can poke your head out and keep going. And uh, that's all we're really going to use the rockets for. So we don't really need to worry about running out of rockets. I still have like three or four rockets. But at this point, we're going to get in the ghost and boost along the right side. And then we're going to go up on this rock and then get on this rock wall. And once we're up here, we're going to turn around. And you can see that the brutes are too far away to be able to shoot at us or throw anything at us. So we could safely just shoot at them from the safety of being all the way back here. So we have infinite ammo with the ghost. And the ghost is actually really good at taking down the shields of the brutes. So that's all we're going to do is target these guys and kill them with BR headshots, except for this first guy. I like to take out that guy in the Wraith turret first, at least, because a lot of times you can see that one Brute is moving over towards that Wraith. I'm hoping that the Brutes actually get into that Wraith turret so then they're easier targets, because although the Ghost is good at taking down their shields, the Brutes are very shifty. They like to kind of dodge a little bit. They'll take a few shots and then kind of move around. But if they get into that Wraith turret, which I'm using as bait like the first turret we were dealing with in this section, I won't have to worry about them dodging. So I was waiting for that Brute to get in. He ends up not getting in, so I'll just have to start in on these guys. But when you're taking out that Wraith turret guy, you want to make sure you're shooting directly at him. You don't want to shoot at the Wraith and then accidentally take out the Wraith itself, because we're going to use the Wraith to get shields all the way up to max at the end of this section. So we're going to take out all of these Brutes, and then we're going to sneak up behind the Wraith at the end, beat it down, and then have full shields for the next section. But as for these Brutes, my main tactic is to just kind of stay back where I am right now, take down their shields with my Ghost, and then I'll be able to switch to my BR later and headshot them to finish them off from far away. And uh, if I do run out of BR ammo, which I shouldn't because I should have a bunch at this point in the mission, but if for whatever reason I lose my battle rifle or whatever, I just don't have it, I run out of ammo, I could just, you know, sit back here with my Ghost and finish them off with the Ghost. Start them with the Ghost, finish them with the Ghost. So... Not ideal because it's going to take a while to chip through the health of the enemies because obviously the Tilt Skull makes the plasma weapons not great at taking down health. But you can see I switched my battle rifle right now because I'm going to take out all these guys who don't have a shield. And then I could switch back to the ghosts to take down the shields of the remaining enemies. But I'm going to skip ahead here because you get the idea. Collapse their shields with the ghost from far away and then just headshot them with the battle rifle from far away. If you have no battle rifle, finish them off with the ghost. Now that all those guys are dead and we only have the Wraith left, I'm going to move down here and look for a Power Drainer because all of these Brutes tend to carry Power Drainers as equipment and I'm going to use said Power Drainer to make the final battle more easy. So, or easier? Do they have a word for more easy? This is what a Power Drainer looks like. And I'm going to exchange my Bubble Shield because, again, I have no use for a Bubble Shield in this mission. And now we're going to board the backside of the Wraith, smack it three times, and then jump off. You want to make sure you jump off after three smacks because it will explode eventually. And if you're still on it while it's exploding, you'll actually take some damage to your shield. So you won't have a full shield anymore. You'll have, like, 90% of a shield or something like that. And now we're going to go over here onto this rock. This is where I like to hang out to ensure that I don't get splattered. Once the Ford Unto Dawn comes into the atmosphere, a big gust of wind comes down and actually blows all of the wreckage around. So if you're in the way, you could get splattered. So we don't want that, but I'm going to skip ahead here. And similarly, you could see that these vehicles are actually scripted to just drive right off of this platform that they are lowered to the ground on. So watch out for that. You don't want to get splattered by that overzealous warthog or tank as they roll off the platform. So steer clear until they're stopped, and then you could jump in. You could see I've sped this part up slightly. I sped this part up about 25% because there's not much to it. We're in a tank. We're going to overpower everything in our way, basically. The first series of enemies we're going to fight is going to consist of these ghosts and also this one prowler. And these guys are actually not that effective at killing you. Uh, even if you take a handful of shots from these guys, your shield may not go down at all. Uh, it may only go down a little bit, if at all. So obviously you want to minimize the amount of shots you're taking. But if you take a bunch of shots, don't worry about it. You're probably still totally healthy, totally fine. So just uh, keep on rolling. Keep that confidence high. And we'll roll into these two hunters. Obviously, you don't want to betray your teammate, which I did just there. Uh, if you betray too many teammates, they'll turn on you. So don't do that. Uh, we don't want to have to fight the Covenant and our friends as well. So we're going to move up here. And you want to shoot down this Phantom as fast as possible. Ideally, you want to shoot it down kind of where it starts off because it will collapse into the center of the area and then provide a bunch of cover for the Covenant, which you would think cover for the Covenant for the enemy is a bad thing, but that would allow you the option to just totally ignore them and drive past them. But the biggest threat in this area is the Fuel Rod Brute. Like I mentioned when we first came into this area, we actually despawned all these guys, but when we come back, they actually all spawn in along with all the enemies that would spawn in on top of them. So we have double the enemies in this section now. 
It's totally feasible, obviously, because we have a tank, so it's not that big of an issue. But just be aware that that Fuel Rod Brute is now alive and active in this area, so watch out for him. He can dish out some decent damage with that. So either take him out or just drive right past him. Another decent threat is plasma grenades and also getting noob comboed. So obviously if you get noobed, you'll be stunned for a short time and you'll be able to get stuck more easily because you can't dodge or anything or move away. So watch out for that. We're just going to take out any grunts who may be throwing grenades at us from far away at this point from here on out. So we won't really have to worry about that too much. This section, more ghosts, and we get some wraith action as well. The wraith mortar actually is pretty devastating, so you want to avoid that at all costs. That's the biggest threat to you. So you want to basically position yourself so you could dodge. I like to just drift backwards or stay stationary whenever I'm facing a wraith. And then that way, when the wraith throws a mortar at me, I could just move forward because you could actually drive forward faster than you could drive backwards in reverse. So you never want to be driving forward when the Wraith shoots at you because then your option to go back in the other direction to avoid the Wraith Bomb is to go in reverse and when you go in reverse you're going much slower so you could escape that Wraith Bomb much more slowly. So start off in reverse then when they throw a bomb at you you can start moving forward again, floor it and get out of there much more quickly. This section here has a bunch of vehicles including two Wraiths in the far distance. You want to take those guys out first. I just blew up that empty chopper which you don't need to do but for whatever reason you still get points for blowing up empty vehicles so I decided I wanted more points and went for it but we're going to focus on these wraiths now and you can see you can just kind of hang back very safely and take these guys out from far away you want to make sure your shots are actually landing because there is some uh, there are some branches right there so you don't want to spend all day shooting those branches wondering why the wraith isn't blowing up um, it's actually kind of tough to see if that wraith is in front of the rock or behind the rock sometimes most of the time I find he's just in front of the rock and just keep firing even though it looks like he might be behind the rock just keep going at it uh, he doesn't like to go behind the rock most of the time. It's just kind of tough to see where exactly he is. And as I'm saying this, I'm shooting the branches that I said you shouldn't shoot. Um, but you can see the wraith, the second wraith, is off towards the right. So there's less uh, things in the way between us and him. So he'll be easier to take out. There's also a bunch of shade turrets up on the right. There's a bunch of choppers uh, as well. So we're going to take out all of those things as we progress through this section. And speaking of choppers, I mentioned that there's the one I blew up for no reason right in the beginning of this section. There's actually a couple more parked choppers that don't have any pilots in them yet. Um, but you actually want to take those out because they're parked up on the structure on the right. And they actually will become occupied if you leave them there. There will be some brutes who happen to hop in and be like, this is a good idea. So you want to avoid that. It's easier to take out an empty chopper than it is to take out a manned chopper. So obviously blow those guys up as soon as you can, as soon as you're done with that wraith. And at this point, we could start moving up along the left side, but you do want to take out as many enemies as possible from this general area before moving up because there's going to be two more ghosts that spawn in once you move up enough, along with another phantom that drops off a wraith along with a bunch of other uh, Covenant troops if you don't take it out fast enough. So we're going to take out all the enemies we can. There's three shade turrets total on that side. You can see we just took out two, and we took out one earlier in this section. And there's going to be another shade turret uh, over in the back far right corner. So we'll take that out uh, before we get over there as well. But once we move forward here, there's going to be the two ghosts that spawn in. So take those guys out quickly. And then we want to look to the right, and there's going to be the wraith that gets dropped off and the phantom. So we'll take out the phantom as quickly as possible. And if you take it out fast enough, it actually won't have time to drop off any enemies aside from the wraith. So take them out, and then we won't have to worry about taking out those guys individually. There's a fifth shade turret as well, so five total. There's three on the right, basically by that wraith that we're shooting at right now. There's one kind of in the middle, and there's one all the way at the end, uh, which we take out last, or I take out last at least most of the time. We got some uh, stray chopper action here. Looks like uh, he's done, so we'll move on here. I'm going to speed this part up shortly uh, even more because we're just wrapping up around this whole area, and uh, we'll go to the door, and then we will have Guilty Spark let us in. We'll have our robot pick that lock. And then we'll be able to go into the next section. And uh, we'll have more tank action. So we go up to this door. Just kind of keep blasting the area. If there's any corners you can't really see around, just make sure there's no enemies lying in wait. And I skipped through that section. There's no enemies or anything. We're going to go over here. And you can see I'm zooming in on a parked chopper. Take note of that chopper because we might need it. You probably won't. But that's our backup chopper. That's plan B in case our first one blows up. We're going to drop down here and we're going to move forward. And most of the time, this phantom does not take this path. I think it's because I was kind of staring at that chopper and zooming in repeatedly on it, which I don't normally do. So I usually just kind of drop down here right away. And the phantom, although in this area generally, does not always fly directly over me like this. Kind of weird. Uh, avoid any plasma fire. You can see he's shooting at me now. 
which again he does not normally do but we're going to drop down off this structure and there's going to be like a garage door type area with tanks in it so we're going to grab the last one in the line here we want to make sure it's the deepest one so it does not uh, take any stray wraith fire or anything like that while we're getting in it and now that we're in the tank, we could just push forward and take out all of these guys as quickly as we can. You can see that all of the guys ahead of us are distracted by our friendly forces, so it's not too bad. Most of the enemies are not going to be firing at you. Um, and you could stay in the safety of the garage type area for as long as you can, as long as you could see enemies and fire on them. Uh, but eventually you do need to move out, so we're going to do so. And it's a little tough to tell where the Wraith Bombs are coming down because of the brightness of the Wraith Bomb itself and the sky itself. So you kind of lose it in the sky. So you kind of want to look at where the Wraith Bombs are going as they're coming out of the Wraith or the series of Wraiths down there, downrange, and just kind of take note if you think any of those bombs are actually going to be landing near you because it's going to be hard to tell uh, if any are coming down once they are all the way in the air just because of the brightness of the skybox. But we're going to move forward eventually, slowly and surely. Avoid shooting any unoccupied uh, choppers because uh, we want to use choppers, or at least one chopper later in the mission. Uh, you won't be able to find... I think there's only two choppers that are parked. So there's the one I showed you initially, and there's one all the way down towards the bottom. So you probably won't find it until we get down towards the end. But at this point, you want to take out the Phantom from far away. You can see I'm shooting it right now. And you want to take this guy out from far away because... He will actually drop off some brutes, including fuel rod brutes, if you move down there without taking him out. So definitely take him out first, and then you can move down there and not have to worry about brute fuel rod guys. As we move down here, it's more of the same. More ghosts, more choppers, more wraiths. And as we take these guys out, these final enemies, it's going to spawn in the scarab. The chopper that I'm going to use is on my left right now. That's plan A, so don't shoot that. But what we want to do here is just kind of hang out where I am right now. You don't want to move any further forward because that will actually spawn in the enemies down there. If you stay back here, the enemies will not spawn in, including the enemies that are on the scarab. So you're going to find that when we take out this scarab, it will be vacant. It will be unoccupied. So you just want to wait here until the scarab walks all the way up to this structure that's kind of right in front of us, this kind of archway. And then we're just going to shoot the back legs. You can see the front legs are a little shorter than the back legs. Uh, so we could actually get enough clearance so we could shoot over the structure ahead of us and we could easily shoot the back of the back legs, like the highest part of the back legs. So just lay into those. This Scarab is actually a little more active than he normally is. I find that when I do this strategy, when I hang out here, he usually doesn't really shoot me too much, if at all, but he's a little more uh, aggressive this time around for whatever reason. And he's also moving around a lot more, like turning back and forth uh, to the left and the right. Usually he's a little more stationary, so it's easier to take him out a little more quickly. But that's all right. We're going to take him out anyway. We're just going to keep firing at him. He's just making it hard for us here. And even if the Scarab does decide to shoot at you when you're in this position, the main gun cannot actually reach you. You can see I cannot see the Scarab's head, so he cannot fire at me with that. He can only shoot at me with that butt turret. So we're going to take him out. You can see he's now collapsing. I landed enough shots on one of his legs where he's collapsing down. We're going to bail out of the tank and go board him. We're going to jump up however you can. Depends how he's oriented, obviously. We're going to climb up. You want to smack him to get your shield back up. You could smack him anywhere. Your shield will recharge. You want to grab one of the turrets on the side of the scarab, and then you could use that to bust through the shield on the back, and then just continue laying into it until it blows up or indicates that it's about to blow up. Then you're going to jump off, and we're going to go back the way we came to the safety of behind that structure, behind that archway. You want to try to put a rock or something big in between you and the explosion, because obviously with the cowbell skull on, there is more of an explosion when things explode. So now that the Scarab has exploded, we're going to go to Plan A, which is that chopper that's down here, just because it's closer. Obviously, uh, we don't want to walk all the way back up if we don't have to. I've never experienced a playthrough where this chopper wasn't intact, but if this happens to blow up or just be missing, you could always go all the way up to the beginning of this section where that chopper was that I was zooming in on and grab that. I've confirmed it does not despawn after you go all the way down here, so it's still available for you if you need it. But we're going to bring whatever chopper we get over to this section. You can see there's kind of a ramp that forms over here by the rock formation, and we're going to use this ramp to basically get on top of the structure ahead of us. So go off the ramp and then boost right as you become airborne with your chopper's boost, and then you can get on top of here and then just drive all the way up to the top, and we're going to use this to drop down onto the top of this structure instead of climbing all the way and fighting a bunch of enemies. We're going to avoid all that crap. We're going to bail out right about here. You can't really go any further in that direction anyway due to a soft wall. And you want to make sure you don't fall down into any of these holes before you want to because you will die from the fall timer if you do it too soon. So right about here where the flat surface below becomes a ramp. So we're going to drop down right about here right before it starts sloping down towards that playable area where we fought the scarab. 
or not exactly where we fought the Scarab, but where the game intends us to fight the Scarab. And then we're going to move back over here, and you're going to eventually get pushed over towards the right, so you can't really go to the left too much anymore. But you're going to float down here. There's some weird gravity that happens as you fall down and you hit a load zone. But we're going to go over here to the top of this ramp, poke your head down, and we're going to shoot these two beam rifle jackals. Or not beam rifle, carbine jackals. But there's going to be a beam rifle jackal we have to deal with shortly. So kill those two carbine jackals, and then we're going to go over here, and we're going to move down this uh, little slope over here, this little ramp. Just go down there. I go down about halfway, and once you reach that point, you can see a pelican actually spawns in at the top of that wall. And as we go back over here, we're going to find a jackal sniper has spawned in, so we're going to shoot him in the legs. That will get him to be startled. He might be afraid already just because he's surprised. But just shoot him in the legs just to be sure. He'll start running away. You could smack him for shields and kill him. We're going to juggle his beam rifle into this area that Guilty Spark just opened up. And we're actually going to leave our battle rifle down on the ground here in the middle. And we're going to have rockets and a beam rifle at this point. And we want to basically exchange our rockets and beam rifle for the two battle rifles that our marine buddies are going to have on that pelican. So I skipped ahead to them landing here. You want to exchange one of your weapons for either of the battle rifles, and then we're going to go in and collect the battle rifle ammo that we left on the ground over here. So we now have our BR ammo consolidated. Switch that consolidated BR to one of the plasma pistols on the ground. That will allow you to take the other BR from the other marine, and now your marines will have a beam rifle, a rocket launcher, and you will have all of the BR ammo so you can walk over that BR again and consolidate a second time. So we now have a full plasma pistol, and we have a BR. We'll wait for Guilty Spark to open up these doors. As he does, we're going to rush to the far right corner to assassinate the brute who is peeing in the corner. And then we're going to turn around and assassinate all of these sleeping grunts as well. The reason we're doing this and not just moving forward is I want to grab more plasma pistol ammo because there's actually a few plasma pistols on the ground with full ammo. So I want to dual wield those to bring more plasma pistol ammo further into this mission. And also, my friendlies will not follow me if I don't uh, assassinate all those grunts. So after clearing out that room, you could see I went back to the previous room where we waited for Guilty Spark to unlock the door. I grabbed another plasma pistol, so I'm now dual wielding two full plasma pistols, and I have a mostly full BR as well. As you move into this next room where you're going to encounter some more enemies, you want to drop your plasma pistol anywhere where you're going to remember to pick it back up again, basically. So I'm going to drop mine right about here. I'm going to overcharge my one plasma pistol, use it to take down the shields of this brute as you get close to him. That will stun him. He'll angrily step forward, and you could wrap up around behind him and assassinate him. You want to clear out this room before you move down into the next section because you will alert the enemies of your presence if you don't clear out this room entirely. So all down below, there's a bunch of grunts. Some of them will turn into suicide grunts, so you want to prioritize killing those and hopefully cause a chain reaction to kill the remainder. Uh, but we got some help from the rocket guy. But now that it's clear, you want to grab your second plasma pistol that we put down temporarily. As we move forward, normally the door to the next room will open up and a brute will be standing there facing us and start yelling at us. And he'll become aware to our presence and alert everybody. But if we move up here, we jump up here and then kind of inch our way out towards that area where we would normally be walking down. You can see he doesn't actually see us and when he turns away, we could jump back down at that point. Follow him towards the middle of the room, assassinate him, then cut into the right and we can assassinate this brute who's sitting down. And then we'll be able to quickly noob combo this brute on the far right. Then you just want to back up and go down either side of the room, taking out the jackals and brutes methodically with the noob combo. Unfortunately, I died for the first time in this run shortly thereafter, but I just wanted to show you the ideal way to start this encounter because my successful run was a little more chaotic. But here we are in said chaotic run. We're going to wait for the brute to start moving towards the left. We'll jump down, assassinate him, and then what happened here in this run was this second brute actually didn't go down so easy. So I smacked him in the back. It didn't register, so I had to improvise a little bit. I just wanted to show you the more ideal way to start this off, which is easier to emulate and repeat rather than just running and gunning. But we took out the three initial brutes, and now we're going to retreat back to either side. I like to go back to the opposite side of where I was, uh, and I like to take out these two jackals at the end of this hallway first. Not really a hallway, kind of like a side, maybe a side hallway. I don't know. The side of the room over here. Just noob combo those guys just as you would a brute. It gets them to run away, and obviously their shield disappears. You can just headshot them real quick. Once you take out those two jackals on your side of the room, you can turn your attention to the center of the room where those two remaining brutes will be. When you first enter this room, there's five brutes in the middle of the room, and there's two jackals on each side, so four jackals total. Uh, so four jackals, five brutes, but we quickly cut those five brutes down to two to make the situation much more manageable, much easier. And uh, at this point, I just have two jackals left. That was an ugly uh, battle I just had with that brute. That was not ideal. But we made it out on top. We have two jackals left, it looks like. And I'm just going to let my buddies handle this at this point. I did most of the work in this room so they could chip in here at the end. Just kind of hang back and let the rocket guy, let the beam rifle guy, and let the arbiter deal with that. 
And in the meantime, I could grab my plasma pistol. These both still have a good amount of ammo in them, so I'm just going to keep moving forward with them. Refill your spike grenades if you need any, and we'll just move in here and up to the console. We'll activate this. That will trigger a cutscene, and we are going to skip that cutscene. And as we come out of this cutscene, we could actually get our shields back. There's going to be a banshee that comes in that the Arbiter boards, and you could actually jump up and smack it to get your shield back so you have a full shield going into this next room here. So you want to basically jump at it from the side and smack it in the side. You don't want to smack it in front because it could splatter you, or it could, at the very least... Uh, basically negate the effect that your melee had. It will basically just keep your shield down and you'll remain shieldless. So you don't want that. And as a bonus, you could see that the brute that was kicked out of the Banshee by the Arbiter, he actually dropped a spike grenade. Sometimes he even drops two. So you'll have one to two spike grenades you could pick up if you need them. But let's talk about this encounter that is occurring without us even being a part of it in the room next to us. These two Marine buddies of ours are being a lot more effective than they normally are. Usually uh, it's up to you for the most part. When you first start this encounter, there's four grunts and two brutes in this room on top of any enemies you let live on your way into this area, which is why we cleared out all the enemies on the way in instead of just running past them because then you'd have double the amount of enemies in there, which is not great. You'd have five brutes, four jackals on top of the four new grunts and two new brutes, let alone the reinforcements that arrive later. Speaking of those reinforcements, they are three brutes, and they will come in from the door you need to exit through if you get close to that door or if you kill those four grunts. So your main objective initially is to kill those four grunts. My marines actually did that already, which caused those three reinforcement brutes to actually enter the room already at the other end. You can see them. One is a brute chieftain with a plasma rifle. The other two are mauler brutes. But you can see I'm kind of just turning to the left and noob comboing those two initial brutes that are in this area. And normally that's a lot easier. It's a lot less hectic because... Normally you have some time between killing the grunts and those brute reinforcements coming from the opposite end of the room. So since those guys were there, they were already throwing grenades, they were already shooting at me, which normally you don't have to deal with right away. So you could kill those two brutes on the left side uh, before you have to deal with those reinforcements if you're quick enough about it. So ideally, kill the four grunts with headshots and then immediately turn your attention to noob comboing the two brutes on the left side and then prepare for the brute reinforcements to come from the opposite end of the room. The two mauler brutes aren't actually a big threat initially because they arrive from the opposite side of the room, so they can't really get that good of a shot on you because the mauler is a short-range weapon, but as they get closer, obviously they become a bigger threat, and the plasma chieftain is immediately a threat. He could shoot you from really anywhere, but we're going to save him for last. Once he's the only one in the room, we're going to use all the geometry to kind of sneak up on him, don't let him get a shot on you until you're super close, then you could overcharge him with a plasma pistol that will stun him, and then you could wrap up around behind him and assassinate him. That's why you don't want to use the plasma pistol or anything really to shoot at him and collapse his shield too soon, because then you can't stun him later when you're ready to wrap up around behind him. But we've cleared out this room now, we can move on to the second to last area, where there's going to be a bunch of invisible brutes along with a couple jackals. So grab a plasma pistol, a fresh enough one, whatever you could find, and then we'll move down here. And we want to switch to our plasma grenades, and you can tell what you have selected by the sounds of the plasma grenades as you switch between them. And we're going to stick this guy. The reason we want to use plasmas is because there's a bunch of plasma grenades in here uh, in this room, so we could refill them pretty easily. So we're going to stick these guys, but as we gather firebombs, we want to switch to those because we could replenish our firebombs easily as well because all of these brutes carry firebombs. So just kind of follow this path and then find all the brutes that you can that are invisible. You can see them, obviously, they're not totally invisible. So just kind of stick those guys with the firebombs. They're pretty good at taking down these guys. Even if you miss, you might hit the floor and still kill them because the fire kind of engulfs the whole area and they could catch on fire and die that way. So they're pretty effective and uh, these brutes actually don't dodge that much. They think they're, uh, they're pretty slick because they're invisible, but we could see them and then we just stick them easily and they don't even try to dodge a lot of the time. There's two jackals in this area in the corner. So we're going to take these guys out however you see fit, whether it's a noob combo or a firebomb or some other grenade. I like to try to save grenades for this final battle, though, so you should have full firebombs, full plasma grenades, and maybe some spike grenades as well. But it's not that important if you don't have any grenades. We're not going to rely on them or anything for this. But you can see I still have my power drainer from towards the middle of the mission, and I'm actually going to juggle it along with this active camo. Camo is something a lot of these guys uh, with camo actually carry on them, so you could grab that. Uh, if you want to use the camo, I'm going to use the power drainer, and you're going to see why shortly. But I'm showing you all the locations where there's a bunch of plasma grenades in case you'd like to stock up before this final battle, which I do recommend. And regarding that camo, I actually juggled it more closer to the battlefield, but I'm actually not going to end up using it. I just kind of juggled it more towards the fight in case I ended up wanting to kind of circle back and grab it real quick, but I'm not going to. The power drainer alone will suffice. 
Get your plasma pistol ready, turn towards the enemies, and we're going to run straight at them and throw the power drainer at the third brute from the right, then overcharge plasma pistol the brute all the way on the right, and then stick the two brutes on the left. This will cause all of these enemies to not shoot at you because they will all have collapsed shields and they'll start berserking, and you can finish them all off with headshots if they're not already dead. And you want to take note of where the hammer chieftain is because he's not going to be a fan of you uh, busting into the party like this, but you could easily sidestep his main attack quickly to the left and then wrap up around behind him and assassinate him for the kill. Once you take out the hammer chieftain, there are going to be additional reinforcements. Fortunately, it's only two jackals, but they do have carbines, so they could be pretty deadly, especially if you have no shield, they could kill you pretty quickly. So you want to go over here. This is the side of the map where they will come from, and there's a really good chance the hammer chieftain actually dropped invincibility if he didn't already use it. So you could actually activate it, just hit the equipment button, and odds are you will become invincible temporarily. But that was a pretty aggressive strategy to take on all those brutes at once. If you're not that comfortable doing that, you could always throw down the power drainer where I said, and noob combo one of the other three brutes right off the bat to collapse four of their six jetpack brute shields, and then back up to the previous room while you headshot them. Grab the camo in that previous room that we were juggling around and then activate it while you kill the last two jetpack brutes along with the hammer chieftain. But that's it for this one guys, one of the longest Halo 3 missions. We have another long one coming up with the Covenant, I'll see you for that one. Thanks for watching guys, if you found that video helpful be sure to click on the scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You could also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen and you could find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides and I'll see you in the next one.